Hi everyone, I am Adessa from Group 5. For this audio video PowerPoint presentation, I am going to discuss the first part of this lesson entitled Relevance and Appropriateness in the Use of Technology in Teaching and Learning in this Unit 4 ICT in Various Content Areas. In this discussion, I will be focusing on the relevance of technology and some point of appropriateness in the use of technology in teaching and learning. After this, you will be watching and listening to the next reporter for the principles in selecting instructional media. In this time of advancement, technology has been very important in all fields of our society. The educational sector embraces and recognizes the involvement of technology towards teaching and learning. Moreover, because of some circumstances, such as what we are facing now, which is the pandemic, technology helped teachers and students in coping to the missed days and still continue the unfinished school days to ensure that a certain educational institution will still afford its vision, mission, and goals. Though it is undeniable that there are some problems which educational sector are trying to solve, still institutions consider the present situation of everyone in this time of pandemic. These are the relevance of technology in teaching and learning. First, technology helps to meet educational aims. According to Karishi, it gives direction to educational activity. These are the predetermined goal which inspires those in educational sector to attain it through appropriate activities. There are factors which affect educational aims such as philosophy, may it be from the teacher, administrator, or the students. We also have the elements of human nature like the skills, knowledge, behavior, communication, and many more. We also consider the religious factors. Technology supports creativity and critical thinking. In higher education, students are expected to use technology in a beneficial way, which, one, which is one of the goal of the free Wi-Fi connection in educational institutions. It has been a great help that teachers use technology to maximize teaching and learning with their students. It is like hitting two birds in one stone. With the use of technology, students will be able to learn on their own, which is good, especially that educational sector allows virtual classrooms. Learners will be able to use and develop their critical thinking for they are going to have no choice but to study on their own. With this, it facilitates the learning and could improve their performance because of the wide scope of knowledge which technology offers us. We will be able to use our decision making and practice ourselves to understand the concept more deeply and more simply. Moreover, technology can be of good use in terms of managing the teaching and learning activities such that there are online platforms in which teachers could use so that they can give learning activities to students even in distance. In return, though students are taught with the fundamental learning or concepts, the students will still be encouraged to explore more and find their own way of understanding it more simply, which could soothe their learning pace and learning capacity. After all, learning never stops. In pedagogical view, Vastigi 2014 believed that transparent or appropriate technology brings greater effectiveness in facilitating teaching and learning. Even though we, if not all but mostly, have the access to numerous and wide variety of technology for us to use, however, as future teachers and current students, appropriateness of these tools for teaching and learning must be taken into account in order for us to ensure its effectiveness. We must take into account also that a certain technology can be appropriate to a specific group of students but not to some in the same class. Next, technology engages students and creates motivated learners. 
Instructional materials which are significantly used in teaching and learning environment are considered as technology or technology as techniques. With the use of varied instructional materials and learning methods, teachers will be able to encourage students to explore and enhance their strengths and strengthen their weaknesses. Teachers will have the opportunity to encourage the students and wake up their inner self and feel motivated to actively participate and learn more to meet the different competencies of the curriculum. It also facilitates the communication between the students and teachers. Giving of instruction became easier because of technology, such as the use of social media like the, in Facebook or in Messenger. Students will be able to connect to their teachers even though they are not in one place. Teachers also can monitor the social activities of their students. Also, with the creative ideas in social media platforms, teachers could integrate it in their classroom management in every session. On the other hand, responsible use of these technologies must be given importance because sometimes students or teacher may forget the gap between them. Students must be thought of value of respect so that the pursuit of technology to facilitate communication would still be effective in spite of the openness with the teacher-student relationship. Technology also enhances individual learning and growth. Just like what I said earlier, educational institutions encourage their faculty and students to have a virtual online classroom using any social media platform such as Google Classroom, Creeper, Canvas, Zoom, and many more. Through these online platforms, teachers will only give activities to be done by their students. With this, students will be able to learn on their own. Students' honest cooperation is needed. But then, appropriateness of learning materials or assessment tasks that are given virtually must be taken into account for the reason that not all students can learn new knowledge on their own. There should be a gradual enhancement for the sake of the students. With technology, the classroom becomes wider. We let students be involved in the real world setting because of interconnectivity bringing the world into the classroom. Teachers relate some concepts into the real world setting and letting students think of their own in what to do in some circumstance in relation to the concept presented to them. For example, in the contemporary world subject in senior high school, with the real life situation given in a specific concept or with the simulation of the different concepts which is available as a phone application, students will be able to handle it when that certain situation may happen to them. This method also changes the teaching pedagogy, which incorporates technology. This is not only teaching the concept, but rather teaching the real-world skills which are relevant and beneficial to students' part when they decided to work. It will help them keep their job. We all know that with the advent of computer age, employers wanted their workers to have many skills so that they can work efficiently and effectively in any circumstances. This does not only transform educational system but most especially it transforms teaching. Technology also infuses classrooms with digital learning tools such as computers and portable devices like smartphones, tablets, and many more. I have mentioned earlier that simulation application and educational apps can be installed in our smartphones. We also have audio video tapes and clips for learning which students can use in learning. These resources prove that technology and education can coexist effectively. Next, we have expanded experiences and learning materials because of technology. Students can learn anytime and anywhere they want. They can utilize their free time in learning even while on social media. There are educational pages, but then this remains a challenge 
to learners to use technology in a good way and in moderation. Even if there are varieties of learning materials, unless there's an assignment or assessment tasks, they will not use technology to learn. Most of the students are only fond of using these resources for entertainment. It supports learning 24-7. Well, basically, we have Google, which we can access 24-7. However, even though it supports learning anytime and anywhere, it still depends on the user if he or she will use it to learn. Technology and teaching and learning builds 21st century skills. According to Stauffer 2020, the 12 21st century skills are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, information literacy, technology literacy, social skills, flexibility, communication, media literacy, leadership, initiative, and productivity. It increases student engagement and motivation. According to Leon Wardlow, a doctor in philosophy, in their teaching in digital age study, Learning is relevant to students when they become engaged, which make them active learner. As technology increases access to learning, tools, and information, students can have a deeper connection and understanding with a certain concept. This makes teaching more effective. According to an educator in their study, when students are given this technology, they can create things which make them more innovative than not incorporating technology in their teaching and learning. With this being said, it adjacently accelerates learning which is not only limited in the four corners of the classroom. Technology also improves instruction and personalizes learning. It improves students' results like in flip classroom. Students are given learning materials about the content to study at home and then practice it at school. Studies had found out that this method gains its popularity because of the positive effects which influences students to learn effectively. Technology and teachers' pedagogy ha have helped students to learn at their own pace. Even though students at specific age has similarities in terms of age and grade level, they still differ on their intellectual capacity, which is why providing a variety of resources with the use of technology can help in the improvement of learning and also in the whole educational system positively. So that would be all for this part one of this lesson. Next, we will be moving to the second reporter. Good day everyone. I am your second presenter for this presentation. Please listen carefully as I present this last topic. When instructional material are properly selected, this can facilitate the effective learning acquisition of the students. This can uphold their active participation in the classroom tasks and activities. This may further enhance their comprehension of the subject matter when, of course, chosen and utilized appropriately. My topic for this report is all about principles in selecting instructional materials. There are five principles. First principle is the principle of appropriateness target learners and instruction. The second, principle of authenticity dependable. The third one, principle of interest. The fourth, principle of the cost. The fifth, and the last one, the principle of organization and balance. These five principles will help the future teacher to achieve their objectives in the class. First, principle. Principle of appropriateness. In this principle, I am must promote the general and specific and also must be either basic or supplementary to the curriculum. I am must be appropriate to the intended level 
such as vocabulary level, difficulty of concepts, methods of development, and interest appeal. The second principle is a principle of authenticity. I am must present accurate in which your words that go put to your IMs must be exact or aligned to your topic. Up to date, in this, IMs must be creative and suit to your audience. Today, we are in the 21st century where technology is rampant and human used it. Most of the school in the entire world are upgraded at their IMs using new tools or new technology and also the there are breeding which is teaching and technology are combined to use as a tool to teach students and dependable information. In this, your information that is put or written in your IMs is trustworthy or can be reliable. We must teach students what is the exact information about that topic. The third principle is the principle of cost. Principle of cost in this, the goal is to substitute must be considered first. The substitute are the most important in this principle. Find other alternative materials if the materials you are using is quite expensive. Also, if you want not to spend much money, you have a choice. You will use your old IMs as your new IMs or in short, you will recycle your old IMs. But you must also consider that you must be creative in order for you to gain your student interest. The fourth principle is the principle of interest. In this principle, the instructional material must catch the interest of the learners. Also, must stimulate curiosity or satisfy the learners need to know. It must have also the power to motivate, encourage creativity, and imaginative response among users. In this principle, your IMs match the catch their interest and listen to the discussion. For example, for the grade 7, they are interested in the IMs that are very colorful and your IMs have in pictures and videos. The last principle is the principle of organization and balance. The instructional material must be well organized and well balanced in content and also the purpose of the material must be clearly stated or perceived and there should be logical organization, clarity, and accordance with the principles of learning such as reinforcement, transfer, and application in the materials. So in this principle, your IMs must be organized, will arrange from the beginning up to the end. If you put your IMs in the blackboard that is messy, your student will not listen, they will not understand. The content must be balanced and also your content must be easily under understand and the zest of the topic must be put in your IMs. The reason for using instructional material directs to an important discussion of the proper selection and utilization, availability of the resources, and learning outcomes and environmental factors are just among the few to be considered when choosing the most feasible and applicable instructional material for effective teaching learning process. Appropriate selection of instructional media or instructional uh, materials 
can be improved quality of teaching and learning. It can help facilitate an effective teaching based on the learning objectives. As appropriate instructional media are chosen in, in the delivery of the course content, students will be guided to improve their learning, performance rate, and achievement. Thus, as a future teacher, I should have the knowledge about these principles of selecting instructional material so that I could make a considerations for making my materials that has is suitability for the students and the environment. Knowing this would help us to become an efficient and effective teacher in the future. That's all. Thank you for listening and God bless us all. As a summary, we have the relevance and appropriateness in the use of technology in teaching and learning. First, it meets educational aims. It supports creativity and critical thinking. It facilitates learning and improves performance. And in pedagogical view, we have a transparent or appropriate technology brings greater effectiveness in facilitating teaching and learning. It engages students and creates motivated learners. It facilitates communication. It enhances individual learning and growth. It brings the world into the classroom. It teaches the real-world skills, transforms teaching, infuses classrooms with digital learning tools. It expands experiences and learning materials. It supports learning 24-7 and also build 21st century skills. It also increases students' engagement and motivation. It accelerates learning. It improves instruction and personalizes learning. It improves students' results like in flip classroom. We also have technology which students can learn at their own pace. And lastly, it improves the entire educational system. For the principles in selecting instructional materials based on their appropriateness and feasibility, we have first, appropriateness for the target learners and instruction. Second, we have the authenticity. Informations are dependable. Third one is the interest. Fourth principle is the cost. And the last principle is the organization and balance. Those are the information in our video audio PowerPoint presentation on the relevance and appropriateness in the use of technology in teaching and learning. We also have laid here the references we have used in this audio video PowerPoint presentation. If you have any other questions, clarifications, and comments, please approach the following persons. That would be all. Thank you.